right, welcome to a Tuesday Night Live here. Not a big um, technique type of uh, revelation here or anything like that, but I just felt like working with um, some of this really crazy loud holographic paper again. I haven't used it, uh, I don't know, in a few weeks now. And sometimes some of the most dynamic types of surfaces um, that we have to use in card making seem to be the ones that are maybe a little bit less compliant with a wide selection of media that we typically employ in card making, dye-based inks, pigment inks, uh, colored pencils, you know, alcohol markers, etc. Um, just because some of the most dynamic surfaces are the ones that are, they're sealed off, they're not, um, they're foils and whatnot with inherent types of, uh, oh, um, patterns and color schemes and uh, characteristics, I guess we can say. So, uh, after working with um, a lot of the, uh, the holographic printable vinyls, which I found work with a lot of things, if not everything, um, in terms of the inks that they'll accept, um, I thought I would go back to incompatibility. <laughs> But we'll show you how to use it, though. Hello, Froggy Fresh. I'm doing well. How are you? Good to see ya. So here's the thing, Froggy Fresh. I've used this paper before a couple times. Not too much. Um, now I'm looking at it like this. I'm, I was thinking maybe I should do it vertical, but I think I'm going to go for more of that northern light type of thing. I, these ones someone t showed me, and they look much more like these light pillars. Um, if you, you look up light pillars on the internet, it'll come up with, you know, these light kind of formations coming from, I don't know, uh, sometimes man-made types of, uh, lighting, you know, and then there's, um, kind of this atmospheric mist in the sky, you know, kind of giving it these, uh, these pillars of light look. But I, I, I just, I felt like using some of this paper again, um, just, I don't know, for practice, but I, I also love the look of it too, so... Let's give it a shot here. Um, it's good to keep in practice with certain things too. You know, working with the uh, the printable vinyls, I find that they're very, you know, accepting of a lot of different media. So um, I thought I'd go back to this one where it's, you know, we're talking about brilliance and stays on, um, you know, the Dr. Martin splatter painting, which of course works on anything. But uh, I don't know, I just want to use this one and kind of use it in a larger scale just to get more of these light pillars. So I don't know, is more, you know, more dynamic. I don't know. I, I find that even a small um, section of this is super, super dynamic. So I don't know. I mean, something like this, you know, a small one, I'm sure you can see across the room, but I don't know if you'd be able to tell what it was until you get a little bit closer, you know, depending on what you have stamped down here. But um I don't know, it makes for a pretty dynamic, you know, scene from the other side of the room, um, visual there. Hello, Linda, how are you? <laughs> the St. Bernard takes, uh, take, maybe it's taken after, taken after dad there, huh? Okay, so uh let's put in the background first here this is with such a large size here i was thinking do i stamp my image first and then go with this but i think it's best to um, go with the background first here hello paula so light pillars seems like we could make like ornaments out of this or something like this huh you know for the tree <laughs> if it it has like a certain dynamic to it i should do that i i should I'm gonna do a large piece on this one right here, but I should cut this down into like little kind of ornament sized pieces or gift tags. That'd be really dynamic. Hmm. Okay, so let's see the here. Okay, so um, kind of curtains of light, you know, a la your um, Northern light types of formations, but you know, a little bit less so maybe or less needed. Okay, so here's what, I haven't done this for, I don't know, a few weeks here, so. Um, it's addition, 
and then subtraction, and then more addition. So a little bit of a circular process because this is not going to stick to the surface very well. Okay, now one of the things that I'm trying to remember is I think I did a pretty strong vignette. And when you start applying some of these, not just specifically this ink on this surface, but any type of surface that is non-porous or less porous than others, it's finding kind of the right application pressure to apply when transferring that uh, media over to your surface because of, here it is if I press too hard I'm removing ink so uh, that's what I have to kind of remember and because I am going to do some removal of ink to get that kind of more wispy type of feathery touch on here um, I have to add more than I think you know looks good um, you know keeping in mind that uh, removal process so subtractive add additive and both additive and subtractive processes here so let's see you need some of this vinyl well this one's not the vinyl here this one's just the card stock so not uh, very compliant in terms of uh, the accepting of media okay see so like you can see that black right there see that there if I just go like that it's removed <laughs> what you don't need to worry about with the um, with the vinyls with the, with the holographic printable vinyls I should say so this on the other hand I don't know I guess you can see it as you can see it as kind of not very user-friendly or you can see it as user-friendly in terms of you can just revise if there's anything that you apply on this paper outside of stays on ink or something like that okay you can just remove it and uh, just reapply it okay so one of those strengths is also on the other hand one of the weaknesses is just a matter of kind of figuring out um i don't know kind of the ideal application or maybe sequencing the ideal sequencing in terms of a uh, media on here and finding out what's compatible too so <laughs> so the question is who's louder your husband or the uh or the dog <laughs> All right, let's see here. Going for a little curtainy thing, and it's going to be a little bit um, rough looking. Okay, let me see if I can even show you this. On this paper, it's really hard to get the angle. Just okay, here we go. To show you where I've applied the ink, I feel like I'm applying. Um, when I'm doing this type of thing, I <laughs> the. Uh, the notion of shoe polish always comes to mind. I feel like I'm applying some kind of like a, I don't know, like a oil-based shoe polish to something. I remember as kids, we always had this box full of uh, shoe shining, you know, polish uh, um, stuff. I never saw my dad use it on any, you know, shoes at that point in time but he was must have been using it before i was born or something like that but we'd always kind of look through that it was almost like a art supply box in some ways or something like that but uh, we'd always open those cans of a uh, um shoe polish it was you know that black and it was kind of like a paste or something i think all right so see this is what we're getting right here this is what you had right there linda you know, on that one piece that you had posted, and I just said, just do the removal process. And uh, and then that doesn't look good either. You know, they have all these like super feathery streaks up there. So you just add it back in again. I, I find that um, like the second time around, I don't know, if, maybe early on I was going with a third um, 
cycle, you know, of adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, or something, just to get the feel of it. But I feel that I have a lot of it down, uh, or did, um, after I did it, uh, I don't know, just a couple times. Okay, so here we go right here. And this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep these. <laughs> this is such, this paper cracks me up here. Um, I'm sure. It is really, there we go, right there. Um, I'm trying to keep these areas right here, and these are the areas that I'll do that subtractive little kind of feathery removal up here, so it looks like these light um, curtains are kind of reaching up, and, you know, these ones are going down here, so it's like curtains of light here. So, you know, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add the negative space um, around the light there, but you can see how clunky it is, right? But that's where you just go in and do that. You know, you just kind of work it back and forth like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you're, yeah. Your husband has a point there. You're, you know, your husband can't hear himself snoring, so he must not. <laughs> he must not be, right? He has never heard himself snore. Um, I should say that uh, before I um, started doing this piece right here earlier today, was it? Or was it yesterday? I re-inked my black pad. <laughs> this, one's, this one's going to use quite a bit, especially on this. Oh, by the way, this is um, 8 by 10 and a half, okay? It, for some reason, these papers, I don't know, they're... I don't know, they're like they're international sizes, so it's like 11 and 3 quarters is the actual size, the, the whole size, um, which would be cooler to have, you know, a little bit you know, elongated for this. Um, but I wouldn't have anything to mat it on, though. That's the problem, you know, if I did it um, less than 8.5 by 11, because, you know, you get... I'll have all of my eight and a half by eleven pieces to, uh, you know, to mat this on. It it'd probably be just something like a piece of black glossy or so. I don't, I'm not sure. It's hard to figure out what to mount this one on. Hello, Genie. Good to see ya. We'll put you to sleep here in no time. <laughs> okay. Although it's only well, it's nine forty, so it's not not too late for us. Froggy Fresh, though, it's like, what is it, 12, almost 12.40? I don't know what time it is for everyone else. Anyone else here on Eastern Standard? All right, going in. So applications are getting a little bit better from, from that side to this side. I'm getting my practice back and let me see if we can show it. So this one's the gold, needless to say. Oh my gosh. Look at that crazy uh, light configuration there. Okay, let me see. Where did I... Almost there. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that. Oh, that's what it was. I needed that glare of that light. So see those right there? See those curtain curtains? So they're real, they're real clunky ones. Now I need to come down that center a little bit more, I think, because I'm going to be removing a lot of that from the base up to get it more um, kind of graceful looking. It's it's anything but graceful right now, right? Uh. <laughs> That's one of those things. Uh, I now I don't know if I snore or not. My wife falls asleep much faster than I do, like in two seconds. Um, but uh, when I was out in Mesa, Arizona, the guy I traveled with, um, you know, we share, you know, we share lodging. So um, I just, I was on a, like a different time uh, schedule to traveling out there this last time. But I just could not sleep, even though I took a uh, earplugs, uh, you know, in my travel kit, you know, anytime I travel, I take the earplugs, but they, they just were not blocking out enough. 
I needed like earplugs and like earmuffs or something like that to uh, uh, to sleep, I think. Or like sleeping pills. <laughs> Maybe I needed to do what uh, some people, you know, or I don't know, one other person told me is that they just, uh, in the past, is uh, they just uh, run one of my videos, you know, and um, it helps them to sleep. Not Eugene, it was someone else. <laughs> Genie doesn't use me as a sleep aid, it just kind of comes inadvertently. <laughs> okay, so adding this down, this is gonna, this is happening much faster than I thought it would. I don't know, it seems like it takes me this long on the quarter page piece right here, but see all that right down there. And coming on the bottom, the bottom I won't need the curtains, so it'll be much faster. And I, I'm gonna add in some other imagery down here too, so. Here's the thing about that too. Okay, so normally we'll add in some imagery and then I can add in a little bit more ink. But the problem is after I stamp my imagery down, I'm gonna do it in the same Brilliance ink as opposed to, because I, I think I'm gonna use the foamies on this one because I can just boom one image and it's going to cover this whole width here instantly. But normally, okay, so normally I, I'll stamp something and then I'll, add in some shadows or something like that after I get my, you know, my bearings on where the imagery is going to be. But I don't want to add in too much of this. I can add it around an image, I think, that the, that's as bold as this, okay. I can add in some extra shading after I stamp this out. But if it's going to be something like, you know, like delicate reeds or something like this, like down here, if I ink over the top of this, you know, this is going to be still wet. And even after it dries, if I tap into it, you know, it might it might remove it more than. Or I'll add in the tone, but I'll also be removing the imagery. So you know what I mean. So you have to kind of keep that in consideration. Probably get the bulk of your kind of initial inks down, at least in a composition like this. Um, maybe not for every single composition that you would use for this type of thing, but I think in this type of nighttime, maybe scenario or something like that. It's best to get that vignette type of thing going uh, or established. At least most of it, okay? It, which could make, I don't know, it could make the process faster too, maybe, you know, if you just get all this stuff down, then there's not so much refinement later, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that Facebook incident. What was that again? You know, you were flagged for something or something like that, or? I can't remember the circumstances. Okay. I'm trying to get a little bit more of a buildup. So again, when you get a decent amount of buildup of that ink like that, um, and trying to build up more, it's very, very uh, possible to remove ink again. So, okay, so here's the touch that I think I'm doing. I think I'm and this is a little bit drier on here too as I start doing this, but I, um, I'm i doing kind of a lighter tapping motion like this to transfer the ink. If I tap harder, I think I'm going to be removing it once it gets built up a little bit. And also, now that I'm, now that some of the ink is down and I'm going over it again, I see that it's kind of a finer, um, application of the ink. It's almost like it's kind of beaded up, right? I don't know if you can tell here, but it's kind of beaded up. Um, not beat up, but B-E-A-D. Okay. See, it's like, see, this is like, it's a little bit more textured right here because that's a wetter applicator. A drier applicator seems to be a finer um, application, I guess, because it's moving it around more. Like these little 
built up beads of ink over here. So I kind of like that better than over here. So I'm just going to go over this again now. And see this, you kind of have to keep, you know, keep the the paper down somewhere. I was holding it. Typically when I'm doing a card, I'm touching the edges all the time because there's not so much space on the inside. Sometimes I have like a streak of black going down the center or something like that. But um, I don't know. So we're, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe doing, working this larger piece. I don't know if it's easier. Okay, so over here too. Okay, so I've added that ink into these areas in here, and I can see that it's either fish eyeing on me. In other words, there's these little kind of breaks in the um, application of ink. It's really fine. It's either that or it's the hairs of the uh, cotton ball, you know, that are in there. I think it's probably the hairs. I see fibers within that black. I thought it was fish eyeing on me. Some of it might be. It's where the, okay, you know, it's it's kind of where you add like a wet application and it's kind of separating a little bit, like these little fissures, but they're done, they're like in these little, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle kind of curvatures in there. But again, I, I'm not sure if that's just, if it's the cotton ball or if it's the ink, it maybe a little both. Not that it's any big deal, it's, it's real super fine. I don't think I... Yeah, you can, maybe you can see a little bit of it. Um, uh, I don't know. It's it's like in this area. I've kind of smoothed it out a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, you can't see the fine detail, but maybe you can see that it's a little bit textured there. But I'm I, okay. I, it's like I'm a, I'm pretty pleased with this um, in terms of. Uh, the look, I don't think I'm going to have to go in and fine tune it quite as much as I've had to in the past. So again, I'm not sure if working larger is kind of easier on this or not. It seems like there's a little bit more of a freedom to it. Okay, I'm going... I'm kind of coming into the beams a little bit more too, okay. Uh, yeah. And again, I, I'm not quite sure either about how much of this, this kind of curtain-y type of thing is really coming into play because it is such a, a loud surface here. Okay, and what you have these beams coming up anyway. I guess what those, what that black is doing is it, it's bending the beams, isn't it? A little bit, you know, I think that's, maybe what's happening but this paper okay so this is the this is the word that reflection okay so see that right there that's a pretty thick application of media on there right <laughs> but look at this even that thickest ink see that like right in watch this right here see that right there yeah it is bending it a little bit like that it's bending the light, like right in here. See that area right there is quite dark, all right? But it just that, the paper is just so strong, you still get that um, kind of peekaboo kind of effect showing through right there. Let's see if I can get a little bit thicker up here, okay? I think just on the, uh, the four corners is the parts where, just from a, containment aspect of it just to so it's not like wide open maybe that's more important you know the most important areas right there to get that as opaque as we can i guess you could spray seal up top here with a workable fixative or something like that and then um, go on with more black ink if you really want to kind of frame the uh, the scene off um, kind of in a super strong um, format. Yeah, don't uh, don't go around cussing and screaming on those uh, on those forms, Froggy Fresh. <laughs> I don't think I 
I've known anyone to to have their accounts flagged. So it's kind of interesting uh, that happened. Uh, not for you, you know, it's an inconvenience, but uh, for sure. But um, yeah. Okay, trying to build it up there if I can. I just did a little removal too. Yeah, okay, but it's 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 building up pretty good. I mean, it's getting pretty dark right there and there, huh? Okay, let's see what we have here. That is a pretty dynamic surface right here. This one's the gold, by the way, if I didn't mention it. There's a red holographic pink and kind of more of a silvery one. Um, I haven't used it enough to uh, figure out which one's my favorite, but... Okay, so, I mean, that... I mean, that does not a scene make, but um, one of the things that I like on this is the the Dr. Martens really solves those kind of deeper, kind of more three-dimensional holographic um, uh, types of surfaces. Um, it just gives something, everything's moving. Okay, this is what I'm being reminded of here. So everything on these surfaces is really moving around. So we're gonna have some imagery over the top of it, which is static, okay? But there's these areas in the background, okay? Basically, the sky, okay? And there'll be water in here. But those whole areas, they're just, <laughs> they're just completely uncontained, okay? They're moving, so they look different at every angle, which is part of the good thing. But I think there's just, something to be said for having some element of stability up there and that's what those stars do up there they they make they they don't stop the the lights from moving around like that but the different star types of patterns up here it's the white splatter painting it it looks like it's at different depths up there so it looks like there's some objects up there that are that are that aren't moving okay Maybe it's like something like, you know, someone's getting motion sickness or something like that. You look at something stable in it. You know what I mean? It just, it, it, I don't know. It creates some visual stability, I guess. Okay, so let's go into this now. And um, I'll use a, I'm not sure what to use. Maybe, maybe I'll use a cotton ball. Or you can use a paintbrush or something of that sort. The paintbrush you have to kind of, wipe off all the time though um, because you're gonna have paint on it okay so this is going to get a little bit sloppy here oh that's good to know paula <laughs> that reminds me i remember uh we were out at uh my friend's wife is a scrapbooker and so is my wife so they went to a scrapbooking show so we took the uh, kids to uh uh on a walk my son and who was older um but his son was really young and uh i don't know i started doing like singing like the abc song or something like that and it was like put her to sleep like instantly you know where she was like crying in the back i was like oh that worked pretty good <laughs> Okay, so I'm going up. Maybe you can't tell what I'm doing right here. Here's what I'm doing. Let's see if I can show you. Okay, so I'm going up into my pillars like this. Okay, so see, this is what this application of ink looks like right here, okay? But can you see this right here where I'm putting in these streaks like this into here? Kind of keep wiping it off like that, okay? Oops. And it kind of makes these areas kind of real feathery okay so watch this see this one right here i've already done that too right there well i didn't do it enough so let's keep coming up like this i'm digging through in some areas the ink is the black ink is thicker all right i'm doing this kind of holding this like this so you can see but um there it is right there okay now we applied more black ink 
with this application in mind, okay? With this subtractive application in mind. But what I'm also doing here is I might be removing a little bit more with the additional application after this. So it's addition, subtraction, and then I blend out some of these streaks a little bit more with some more black ink. So it's like the third um, step. Let me see if I can get that glare back in this. Here we go. Now, I don't work like this. I'm just trying to hold this at an angle so you can see kind of what's a little bit more of what's happening here. I need a clipboard or something. Um, some of the ink feels a little bit drier, but it's not so dry that I can't remove it, okay? Even if this ink is really... If I heat set it and it's dry, I, I can probably still go back into it and do this uh, type of process. You know, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, if this ink is dry on here, you might even be able to take a look at that, like that. Doesn't that look amazing? Um, you can probably, like say if you heat set this, you might be able to wet your um, brush or whatever you're doing the subtractive process with and go back into it because the brilliant sink is water-based so that might work too <laughs> I just read froggy's uh, comment <laughs> Okay, let's see. I need to get my bearings too because it's hard to, it's hard to see. With all these, these like I have these like flashing lights like in my face here. I'm hoping I don't have like a seizure. We need to put. Uh, I think we've mentioned this in the past. It's like we need to put a, uh, you know, this uh, warning on the these videos. You know, this video contains uh, like flashing lights. Okay, so this, I'm usually, this usually looks much, much sloppier than this one here. So I think I'm, I think working on larger paper like this, larger formats, like easier, or it just seems to be. I thought I would have some difficult time, especially after working with a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the printable vinyls. Where it's like the opposite uh, in terms of, uh, I don't know, whatever uh, media um, adhering to the surface. Um, on, okay, so on the printable vinyls, if you're doing this type of thing, that ink is like, it's like set almost. I don't know if it's not quite instantly, but like super, super fast. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's just... It's a different experience, um, you know. If you started off with the uh, the printable vinyls or something like that, and if you go to the holographic card stocks, just you know, just keep that in mind. It's a it's a different uh, it's a different uh, beast as far as the application of media goes. 
it's they're both pretty fun though you get a little bit inkier with this one you know because you know if you just touch your finger there it's going to remove like i don't know whatever 80 percent of the ink that you've applied down there though so but i don't know um you know like kids like working with uh you know they paint in paint in mud or you know in food and all that type of stuff you had to get back in kind of the spirit of uh of uh <laughs> like childlike simplicity or something like that okay so um yeah look at this i don't know where that came from that might have came off the uh the piece somehow okay so i don't really feel like i need to go back into this my kind of little wispier uh subtractive touches in here look reasonably decent see that right there it's like a little flame or something like that. Maybe I'll go into it a little bit. So what this is doing, see, sometimes I get this like really harsh streak back into it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I use that brush um, on that, uh, you know, those pearlescent inks recently. So that maybe the brush is a little bit, or a lot softer than it was. Um, but you'll have these streaks up there and sometimes you can add a little bit of tone back into it so that you make the, the streak a little bit lighter and then when it moves up here if you add a little bit of tone over it you're making the streak darker so it's transitioning better um, in that area and that's the areas that I've really needed to uh, to work on in the past when I've done this before maybe it's like I said maybe it's the brush the brush is a lot softer this time around so I wasn't getting like these really super harsh um, kind of applications in there maybe okay so that is that the fun part is this part right here and this is the part that um, I think really makes this paper for me uh, usable I guess um, and that's just splatter painting it I I'm not sure no I think I did it in every one I was thinking about this tropical one that I did where I had the uh, the lights kind of sideways like this um, I'm pretty sure I put some stars in there let's see airbrush oh the airbrush yeah froggy fresh yeah if you have an airbrush an airbrush would look for, fantastic for this if, if that's what you're referring to okay it might be time to pick up another bottle of this unless I do have another bottle I have several bottles of this but I combined a few of them I, I don't know it would seem strange if I'm out of it because I had several bottles of this at one time I used it in a class uh, once I think it, it was either in a class or make and takes uh, the bleed proof white can you imagine everyone like in a class like splatter painting though <clears throat> all right okay I won't squeeze out as much as I normally do because this is a larger piece again so um where do I do this do I do this over the whole thing maybe more up top and less down below okay let me see if you can see this here I'll put it at an angle like this let me go down here a little bit I totally splatter painted my uh, computer mouse a ton <laughs> the other day or I don't know whatever it was I'm going to put a little bit down here too just you know if something's like super reflective you'd see that um you know those little stars in the water down here as well I don't want it crazy busy but I want a decent amount in there okay so um here we go like this okay so again here's the stars like that there's a little bit too much in there 
I'll refine it a little bit more with that black ink, but see those stars up there? I feel that that it stabilizes that whole top area though, doesn't it? Um, and it looks like they're floating. It, they're dimensional. It looks like the lights are behind the stars too. Maybe sometimes in front of the star if it's light enough, right? Then the star just kind of disappears. So you have some of the colors where I guess that's what it is. If it's light enough, the star disappears because um, it's stronger than it. But like that red streak down the middle, the star is in front of it. So you get this kind of dimensional type of thing where it looks like those stars are kind of hovering um, within the lights or pillars or whatever in this case. Like that. I love that look. And like I said, it it just, I don't know, it stabilizes things that are just too crazy. And, you know, kind of working with the, these different types of papers like that, one of the fun things about it is that they are kind of crazy and, you know, you got to kind of tame it a little bit. But you don't get rid of the characteristic that, you know, it's you know, it's so great for. So you just kind of subdue some of it. Okay, I'm going to get rid of some of these um, stars. Uh, I'm not get, totally getting rid of them. I'm just making some of them a little bit darker. Okay, because it's just a little bit too much. Okay, so that's like that. It'd be kind of interesting. You know, it'd be really cool. Um, but I don't know if it exists out there, but if we had some kind of glow in the dark ink that was opaque enough where, you know, it can splatter above over the top of something that's really, um, super visually loud and stand out, but it would still glow in the dark really well. Um, and that would be perfect for this type of surface. Because it'd be, you'd have kind of this dynamic look in, um, you know, lighting. And then if you flip the light off or something like that, where there's still a little residual light, you could probably still see that, you know, that, that look like that. But you'd have these stars that are glowing in, you know, a less illuminated area. I do have some glow in the dark, but it it's kind of weak though. I need to try it again though. But um it's this stuff and I haven't used it enough to figure it out, but um I don't know. I need to try it. It's by Plaid. Uh I just realized. I don't know. I knew it when I got it, I guess, but it's probably been like years since I've used it. So, okay. So, I just muted out some of those stars in there a little bit more. I've kind of dabbed around. And let's take a look. That's still a little bit loud. Right there. Oh, I know what I need to do. Okay, so this area in here looks okay. I need to mute out the ones around on the edge where I've added that darker vignette. Uh, just to contain the composition a little bit more. Froggy Fresh is a repeat offender. Yeah, I got it. There's no doubt about that. In terms of the murderers and uh, people who hurt kids, I'm saying not no doubt about you being a repeat offender. Okay, so do that right there. So I've mu muted out those um, that texture around there. And there's still some stars, okay, but it's just less busy, okay. A little bit too much right here too. I don't. Know, the, the, I mean, you don't have to remove this type of thing, but this is just little little fine tuning things. I think for me, it just kind of puts the frame around it a little bit more. 
there you can see it like that look at that you can even see the stars at this angle like that like that <laughs> that cracks me up like that you know it's kind of weird why can't we see i guess it's because there's i guess it's, it's just so glary like that but it doesn't that's lighter than white though so why isn't that showing like that it's like that right in there i guess some of the brighter stars larger ones show up a little bit but i don't know that always kind of blows me away every time i see that type of thing i tend to forget about it though when i don't use these foils for a while just you know what um you know some of the different lighting effects um what some of the lighting effects i guess contribute to the overall and whatever interactive aspect of the uh of the medium okay so that is that uh, i think this cotton balls had it don't you look at that it served its now well, let's keep it out because i might use it more on this card that cotton ball was used on this piece right here here's my last piece right here totally um matte black cardstock for um on the video i didn't show this but i added in some silver stars in here after i finished that video so they're a little bit more reflective see you can see the white right there but then when i add this like that like that there's a lot more silver stars up here too so this is why i wanted to use this paper too um i've been using a lot of those printable vinyls and then i just use that matte card stock which pretty much takes you know just about any type of ink and dries on there so going, I wanted to go back with one of these. Uh, crazy looking um, surfaces like this. Oh, <laughs> that's funny, Paula. And she can play with your inks, uh, especially like on the walls and stuff like that. I, I say, give her. Give her some of those, I, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this, it sounds, that sounds familiar, like, have we talked about this before, but give her some, uh, I think you need to give her some, uh, some nice sponge uh, stamps or do some carving out with some potato stamps like that and say, hey, right here on that side of your bedroom, you got this big open, you know, canvas. Do your thing. <laughs> you probably want one or using your Copic markers, though, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> they have a, let me see, who was it? Um, ClearSnap, I think. ClearSnap had all those um, ink pads for kids at one time. Um, I don't know. I think all pads are non-toxic anyway, but um, uh, the, I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know what specifics there, there was to um, those uh, ink pads for kids, but I remember seeing them, though, in their, uh, in their offerings. Okay, I just added some black ink on this. This is really big right here, so should I add more? And again, it's because I can't tell how much ink has been applied on here. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'm just gonna go with this. I just used a lot of this ink on that surface right there, and you know, pigment inks are really thick, so sometimes I'm going for, um, you know, I'm going, I'm re-inking every time I use the pad and that's not even on, you know, like this gigantic scene. So I hope there's enough on here. The thing is I, I don't want to over ink this and then I'm just wasting all of the excess ink that I've applied to this. Cause I'm only going to be doing this for one impression. So far, I've I haven't stamped out one of these foamy stamps and not have and ha not had enough ink. In fact, you know I've had I've always erred in the uh, you know whatever the 
erred on the side of uh, what, what what was that Con the side of caution or whatever you know so I've added a little bit too much ink most of the time because the foamies um, I don't know it's a little bit less surface oriented because it's porous so um, you know it, it's occurred to me I could probably go for like two almost full impressions uh, with one inking. I guess with one over inking. Okay, so we'll add this a little bit lower on this and keep those pillars up high. You can go, nah, that wouldn't look good. <laughs> I was gonna say you can go higher and have, um, you know, the, more of that reflective area down there, but I, th I think having it a little bit lower on this case would be best. Maybe rule of thirds or something like that. Eh, let's go a little bit higher than that. So the rule of thirds would apply more to not the top of this right here, but it's more of the horizon like that. So it's like third, third, okay, that type of thing. Here's what I'm hoping for too, um, where I'm applying this ink over the top of that applied vignette of black i'm hoping that um we're not removing that vignette of black which can happen instead of transferring this ink over it's i don't know it seems like it could be possible that you could also remove ink that you've applied Now, I, okay, so on the printable vinyl, you don't hold your um, your stamp down too long, okay? Otherwise, it's it like sticks like glue to that surface. Even just holding it down briefly, it just that ink transfers over like instantly. But on this one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I held it down a little bit longer, allowing that ink to kind of set up a little bit. I mean, it's not drying on there, okay? Like even this area out here that I applied like 15 minutes ago, it's still wet, I can just go right into it, okay? But I think it kind of adheres a little bit more than, um, than just simply removing it too fast. Okay, so this is what we have here. And I think I held it down a lot longer than I needed to here. Okay, so we have this right here. So we have a lot of open rocks down there, okay? So that area down there, I need to add in that additional shading that I was talking about, okay? But that is that foamy stamp. So that foamy stamp took over, you know, took care of that whole width instantly. You can do it with the smaller versions too. Um, you just have to do a couple different impressions in there. So, okay, so see these open areas on these rocks? I'm not going to close them off completely and make the whole thing just a complete silhouette, but I'm going to darken them just so I don't have those lights showing right through the tree, uh, the rocks like that. The trees are already silhouettes, so I don't need to worry about that. All right, so... Uh, yeah, okay, so here's the black pigment ink again. Do I need to re-ink this? You know what I think I'm going to do? This is really juicy right here. I think I'm going to heat set it slightly. Um, let me get some of my little smudgy fingerprints on the perimeter where I've touched and it's removed ink. All right, let's heat set it a little bit because I think that might help it. And again, I think I had used like way too much ink. Well, not too much, you know, you don't want to use too little, but I used way more than I think I needed. I should stamp that on something else and just uh, use that um, impression for something else uh, later on.
I'm not going to go overboard with it because I, on this foil, you know, this metallic foil, it's already starting to bow a little bit just from that little bit of heat. Um, so I don't want it to completely bow because, you know, let me see if I can just bend that back right here. All right, that did it. Reasonably flat here. Okay, so I'm going to try and apply this back into this. Like I said, I didn't do it too much, but um, let's see what we can do here. So I've been working on the printable vinyls. I would be doing um, a colored pencil on this normally, but um, if it was printable vinyl, but on this, where we're just working with the same ink here. Um, I'll try to apply some of it. Okay, that heat setting helped it because um, the imagery is staying reasonably intact. I might be put, I might be blending in some of it though. And it's definitely not dry. So as I go over it, I'm using some of the impression ink to kind of blend in, you know, to kind of create these shadows here. But it's, it's, I'm pretty pleased with that brilliant sink. It dried pretty good. I can tell because as I'm going down here in the shadows, it's not really a, I'm not wiping off the, you know, that ink at all, you know, um, the impression ink too much. Like I said, it might be going around and spreading it a little bit. But, I don't know, it seems to be fairly crisp, so that's good. Okay, I'll go a little bit heavier on the sides, because those sides would be a little bit um, darker anyway. Froggy Fresh stuck their elbow in stays on ink yesterday. I still can't get the stay... Leave it on, Froggy Fresh, you know. We're, we're card makers, that's a... That's like a badge of honor. Does it look like anything? It's like a, what, uh, what do you see in that ink uh, impression? It's like a, looking at the clouds, you know, you're supposed to, uh, you're supposed to kind of figure out, you're supposed to look at your ink stains and uh, see what you see in them. They call those ink readings, I think. Sometimes you see those people doing ink readings at uh, like the stamp conventions. <laughs> Don't go to the stamp convention and ask for an ink reader now. Okay, I need to see what I'm doing here. Adding in um, this base area down here, okay, underneath the shadow, uh, underneath the uh, the imagery to create those shadows giving the um, the imagery and objects a little bit more of a visual weight. Okay, can you see that, you know, see that object, uh, the object's a little bit more forward now, rather than having those pillars just go straight through, you know, completely, and it is going straight through. That's inevitable with this um, super uh, dark, I mean, uh, active, uh, light underneath there, the patterning, but it's it's obscuring it somewhat. All right. I like that. Oh my gosh, look at those stars and those lights in there. It's kind of dizzying. Let me see over here. I think I think I got a little bit of a 
texturing up here after I heat set this area up here. So let me go with a little bit more of a oh, uh, kind of a vignette application again on the uh, on the corners. Okay, go like that. Whoa. I was thinking about putting something down there like a little fisherman, but I, the Foamies version, they made a larger version of this fisherman right here, but I I don't think that's going to be obscured because this this particular um, patterning has the have, have these like really super contrasty streaks in here. So I'd have these like dark lines going underneath, um, you know, a subject matter. And uh, it would, I don't think that's going to work in there. I mean, it, it might, you know, I, but I usually, I do usually like to, um, when I'm stamping like subject matter in the scene, I like to have the area around it or in behind it lighter so that we can see the full silhouette. Okay. Like if I snap, like if this is a piece of glossy card, so can I put this right here? You know, I w we wouldn't even be able to see the head, right? Or if you stamped it like down in here. I'm, d I'm talking about if it was just on regular paper and these were the colors behind it. You don't want it to be obscured by this, you know, it would be this like head sticking out of this, you know, dark pillar like that. So on this one right here, you can't tell where the pillars are going to go because they're changing like all the time. So, you know, I, I think it's just better to keep stay with the, uh, the bolder imagery on this. Uh, kind of the foundational ones. I, maybe you can do something. Maybe it might be interesting to do something where you have something, maybe if it's much smaller in there, where it's like, you know, you now you see it, now you don't or something. Um, all right. Trying to think of what I want here in the foreground. Here's some leaves. Or do I use that? Where's that? Where's my foamy version of the, the reed stamp? Eh, it's a little bit larger. Let's go with this right here. I think we can get rid of this. Ah, eh, let's save it. Stampscape Snowman. That sounds pretty cool. How are you going to do that? Stamping it on a brown paper bag. Oh, I love that. See? <laughs> Your kid drew on the wall and you framed it and it's still out in the hallway. That's cool. Um... I had some, you know, there were, you know, those bath, um, you know, those bath crayons, you know, where the kids like draw in the bath. Um, my kid drew uh, some things. It's barely visible now, but um, I kept that. I haven't like totally cleaned off that area of the bathtub of, uh, you know, those residual crayons. My kid's like 16 now, though. <laughs> so it's been quite some time. I don't know when he drew those on there. It wasn't like last year, though but I've kept a little bit of residual color uh, or crayon, fr bath crayon from that uh, time. I didn't frame it though, but I should take a little picture of it though. I should have taken a picture. It, it's I, I, You can't really see it. it. It was probably some kind of a object or something like that at one point in time, but um, Just little kind of like swirly uh, textures at this point in time. One of the things that I got were, were one of those um, those tables. I think we got it at Ikea. Or so I don't know where it was from, but um, it had that gigantic spool of paper that you put in and it goes, it gets dragged over the top of, you know, their little workstation or something like that. So 
it's getting taken up by one side of the uh, the other side of the table. So I have these like gigantic, I don't know what they were, 50 foot um, things of like uh, like newsprint um, paper, you know, with uh, I don't know, a lot of, you know, whatever drawings he was doing on them at the time or whatever types of artwork. I still have those. All right, so there are the foreground elements right in there. And there it is, your nighttime light pillars there. Frankie Fresh can't see their elbow. It, someone t- should take a picture of your elbow. Or I don't know, you can't hold it up in like the uh, hold it up in like the bathroom like mirror or something like that. But look at that there. Does that, I don't know, I think that looks three-dimensional. So, okay, so here's the thing. I mean, I've done these before. This isn't like a like a new um, technique or something like this here. But what I did was I did it on a smaller, you know, quarter page piece, like something like, you know, that would be this big right here. I'm trying not to touch, I don't want to touch this paper, otherwise the ink's going to come right off of it. So, you know, I, I don't know how much this, larger format contributed to the overall piece but i mean you know you have just more pillars here these ones are set there it seems like the pillars are set widths too on this one where you know other types of holographic it's just you know what i mean it's just everything's just wide open you know what i mean it doesn't really change but this one right here is a really specific holographic you know what i mean i this i mean this pillar right here isn't moving from right here over the cross, you know, the side of the, at least I don't think it is. Eh, I guess it moves a little bit potentially, huh? But it's not moving like all the way across the paper. It's not going from one side to the other. So it stays within this little span. So I just wanted to see what this looks like is, you know what I mean? Um, Is more better or is just more and more, you know what I mean? I think it's, I like my smaller ones too a lot. Um, but this, I don't know, I guess, I guess it's just in terms of scale. You know, if you wanted to do a bigger piece like this, you know, it's it'd be more visible from, you know, a farther distance, something like that. But um, I don't know, yeah. It's, it's just fun stuff. Okay, so... I don't know. I guess I guess one of the things too, maybe if you're using a smaller piece, maybe you see certain types of patterns in there. Whereas this one, let's see, are the patterns the same all the way across? I guess not. I guess there's more variety. Like this one's that blue green right here, red and yellow. You know, where if if you had a smaller piece, um, you know, just a typical card, um, you're getting less variety at one angle. Gosh, look at even that, like that. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like if I can here um, without any of the uh, holographic <laughs> aspect of it. So, so this is what this is looking like down here. Okay. And then we here's those ink applications that I did right in the background like that, okay? And that's how it ends up. So you see what I mean about those, kind of the stability of the stars up there? I think that really is a a pretty fun application up there. And if you don't get it right, then you just block a lot of it off with your uh, black ink again. If you block off too much and you don't like it, then you can splatter paint again, probably. You, know, you might be able to go for extra depth too. You might be able to put a little bit of splattering down there and you can blot off all of them where they look really gray and more distant. Hello, CJ. And then you might be able to splatter paint again where you get brighter ones. I don't know. You know, I, it was kind of the same type of thing that I did with splatter painting it and then going back in and muting a lot of that too, so. Um, just getting kind of a little bit more depth into this just inherently deep, active surface like that and getting a, 
a certain amount of stable depth, I guess. You can say, see, some of those stars look a little bit, some of them are smaller than others, but some of them have that, you know, that gray ink, uh, uh, you know, applied over the top of it. Black ink, but just applied in a very thin layer to give those stars a little bit of extra depth like that. So, oh, I don't know, fun stuff. And I would, that's probably the general technique that I would use with any of the super, super loud um, holographic surfaces. And like I said, some of them are much more um, visually loud than the other ones. This one's one of the loudest, um, I think, that I've seen, just in terms of the sheer amount of contrast that you get in these small spaces. So these streaks of black, just with these streaks of like super light reflective surfaces like that. Like I said, you know, on the other types of holographics, you don't get that that huge amount of um, contrast in there on here, you know. I mean, I added the black up there, but, you know, down here it looks black or, you know, like super dark anyways, and I didn't add any, you know, of that um, black ink like down in these areas like down here, right? But you still look like this and, it, you know, it's top to bottom, super contrasty, so, um, yeah. So that's a way to do it right there. One, that's one solution for us kind of scenic stampers. You just splatter paint it and it'll, you know, create that depth within there, but pretty easy scene to do. You know, this is a large piece right here. And what time are we at right here? An hour, you know what I mean? To do this, that's like, you know, if I did, I don't know, this card took, you know, it's not like, okay, so if this card took one hour, then the quarter page sizes of these would take 15 minutes. They'd probably take about, I don't know, 25 minutes, I would think, doing that, you know, getting those streaks down there and refining them and whatnot. But it makes for a pretty quick application because we're not, like in this one right here, I didn't even use white pigment ink. Okay, it's just black and then the uh, the splatter painting. So I don't know. That's, that's a lot of... Uh, I don't know, whatever dynamics, visual di dynamics for um, for the effort there. Just because, again, we're starting off with this inherently active surface like this. This would be good if you had some kind of like a, like a silhouette of like a, you know, urban skyline or something like that, wouldn't it? Because it would look like, you know, colors of the, uh, I don't know, whatever, that city or something like that kind of reflecting up in the sky like that. And I think that's what some of those light pillars were, like I said at the beginning of this video. Um, if you look up light pillars and uh, images online, a lot of it is, I think a lot of it is urban. Um, you know, looking over a city or something like that, and just that fog in the uh, whatever, atmosphere or whatever, you know, are catching some of that light coming from uh, whatever man-made uh, objects lighting are down there. So, yeah. All right. Boy, that looks like really different right there too, doesn't it? Hello, Tina. Good to see you. Glad you're able to jump in here on the live. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, what is that card stack? Tina, it is a holographic card stock, okay? Not to be mistaken <laughs> these days with the holographic vi uh, vinyl or the holographic printable vinyl. That's a, Those are two different ones, okay? This one right here... It, 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 Linda, Linda B., um, that that holographic vinyl that you got, that sticker one that you got, um, did you try applying any type of ink over the top of that at all? Because I was wondering if you can use, if we can use that vinyl holographic sticker um, 
with those stars. I think, I don't know if you got, yeah, it was the star one, right? Would that take the, uh, the brilliant zinc, do you think? Because this, I mean, this is non-porous too, so I'm not sure, you know, if that, if the, uh, if the, uh, the vinyl holographic would be the same right there. But, uh, okay, but, but Tina, the, um, the link for this, uh, cardstock's right in this description of this, uh, video. Um, just click show more underneath it if you're able to do that. Unless someone's watching, like, on their TV or something like that. Baby Yoda. <laughs> we have a baby Yoda. Um, I think my wife got, she got one or two of them. I think one's upstairs with, uh, right around where my son's uh, desk is or something like that. And we had one on the mantle. <laughs> we love that baby Yoda. Even though it's not baby Yoda, that's what everyone, that's what we, you know, I don't care if it's Grogu, you know, baby Yoda sounds better. I like it too, Linda. Yeah, it was it was splattered too much. Okay, so Linda, you were asking about that. So you you got that technique down there with the uh, with the removal of ink. So uh, so Tina, what we did was we added black ink down like that, and then what we did was we went back into it with a paintbrush. Do you see this kind of wispy kind of textures in that black ink? You go in with the uh, with the like a, a soft brush. <laughs> I say soft because it worked much better this time around. When I was doing this before, my brush was a little bit harder, but I went back into it. You wisp this back into it, blot off a little bit and wisp back into it. And then what you do is you go back in with your pigment ink and then just go back into it. And you can just keep going back and forth until you get these kind of pillars the way you want them to. On this paper, it's not so important because these pillars of light, you know, this holographic patterning is so sharp and distinct. So I didn't have to get these light curtains down very well. As a matter of fact, let me see this right here. There we go. I'm refining it now that I'm looking at it because I can't even see those right here. When I'm looking at it like this, I can't see what I really did. When I go like this, I can a little bit more. But uh, yeah, you just go. Okay, so uh, so if you're working on, uh, needless to say, if you're working on um, holographic cardstocks with this type of ink, okay, the brilliance ink will dry on here. But I'm going to have to spray seal this too, okay? I'm going to do a light spray sealing over the top of it with a like a Krylon to make this ink adhere to the surface. It'll dry on the surface just fine, but we need to make it adhere to it. So um, spray sealing with, uh, God, those stars really stand out like that. When I go like that, like that, it's like, oh my God, there are a gazillion stars up there. But then when you show it at like different angles though, I don't see them as much. Okay, so yeah, but just spray seal and spray seal kind of lightly, you know, just to go around it. Um, you know, if you have something like this, what you do is you put it in one of those clear envelopes if you're giving it to someone, you know what I mean? Because I think if you do a light spray sealing down here, I mean, hopefully, if, you know, if you're giving this card to someone a big piece, you know, they're not going like this. Oh, wait, let me see this, you know, and they're doing this, you know what I mean? So you just need to get it, you know, reasonably affixed to the surface to, um, you know, to not come off, you know, in transport, you know, or something like that. But it shouldn't, you know, I mean, if you hit it with a, a sealant, it should be just fine. So, yeah. Now, see, like that, if it's like light down there like that all the time, you know, no problem, you know, putting that little character like this down here. But the thing is, when people are looking at it, they're looking at it like this, you know, <laughs> you know, at all different. It looks different all the time like that, just depending on what lighting you have. I think I was like, what's light right there? It's my it's my head right there reflecting off this there. See, I'm out of there now. I'm out of the uh, uh, I'm out of the shot there like that. But anyways, fun stuff. And there's three or four other colors of this type of um, 
paper in that multicolor holographic um, cardstock pack. Okay, they usually are. There's usually a you know uh, some different um, colors in these kind of crazier pattern types like that. Um, let me see. It, Okay, Linda, she tried some ink on the holographic vinyl sticker paper. Okay, it peeled. I Oh, I peeled it and then put it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So you'd need to peel it off and apply it over the top of the scene. Or just use that as the surface itself then. I, I wonder if the brilliance would, you know, how it would do on there. The thing on that sticker paper, um, you wouldn't want to heat set it at all, I wouldn't think. Not on sticker paper, huh? Sl oh, the stays on slipped and smeared. Okay. Well, what if you what if you didn't peel it off though? Um, would that stay? I got to think the stays on would work on that, unless that stays on isn't just. It's not going to stick to what you know. If it's like a waxier type of. Um, Top surface, uh, or would it be on that sticker paper? Okay, we're, we're talking about a completely different paper here. We're talking about vinyl sticker paper there. Look at that. You can do something. You can take a photograph of, um, you don't want your hands in the photograph, but, you know, you can do this type of thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> take a video of your... Uh, um card and post it on facebook and people are going to be what the heck is going on in your sky like that you know i'm doing this type of thing right over the top of it like that you know um one hair and some air bob ross <laughs> oh you found it good tina give it a try see how it goes so remember apply some ink Remove and then apply again and then just keep doing that back and forth as many times as you need to do Do it um, just to get it where you want it to go and then uh, if you have some kind of white that you can splatter in there or if you just have a White paint pen or gel pen you can add in those stars right in there and it's really fun stuff I didn't need to go in here normally I would add in you know a couple larger uh, dots or something like that but I got a pretty decent um, splattering in terms of um, the variation of dot size um, on this splatter <laughs> this card came together pretty pretty easily for me I thought it'd be a little bit more temperamental you know working going from the um, the vinyl printable vinyls you know which are completely user whatever friendly in terms of a uh, instant adhering of uh, all media to it you know to going back to this one which is like really kind of uh i don't know um malleable you know post application but like i said i don't know maybe working with this larger size is easier i don't know okay so uh, I have spray sealed the holographic cardstock before. I, I had to spray seal all of them, otherwise it would come off. Like those ones that I was doing back when I started off with the gold holographic, uh, no, the gold foils, okay? And the gold foils are more, um, they're more uh, temperamental in terms of uh, the ink adhering to it, just like this one. But I have had to spray Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have had to, like this is the uh, this is the uh, the chrome coat um, holographic, and if I don't spray seal this one, you know that media is going to wipe right off it. So I've spray sealed them all. Okay, but my technique on something like this is to spray seal it from distance, like a shot across here, and then if I have some areas that I don't have too much of the ink. I don't spray like, I wouldn't spray like too much right in here. Okay, I, I try to leave it as pure as possible. So I'm going to go across like this down here from distance, you know, so I mean some of it inevitably is going to get in here, but sometimes when I'm spraying, I'll just hold a piece of paper up like this, okay, and I'll spray seal like this so that I'm kind of missing most of it. Then I'll just spray seal 
like this on the side and up top like this without covering any of this up. But see, if I'm kind of targeting the area up here like this, that overspray is going to get down here. And I spray from at least 12 inches, okay, away. Because I don't want a big, thick, dripping application of it or something like that. So I just depend on that kind of residual spray from targeting about, you know, this area right here. You know, this, these kind of go down here. But these areas down here are a thinner application of that black ink. So I don't need as much um, of that uh, sealant in these areas like that. It, it needs a thinner coat, you know, for a thinner application of it, I, you know, I would think. So that's the way I've always done it like that. But yeah, otherwise it'll just wipe right off uh, even after it dries. The only thing that's really sticking on this really firmly um, directly to the paper is that white splatter painting. Um, the white over the top of that ink is that'll probably just wipe off if I just go into it like this right now. So, yeah. Uh, anything moist seems to react to the holographic. Okay, so the one thing about this one is this is a water-based, you know, you know, the brilliance inks are the water-based inks. So I don't find that those ones react too much. It just reacts in terms of like, if I have a really thin application of white, just like pastels or something like that, if you go over it too thick, um, you, it tends to disappear, but the black, though, is not something that uh, disappears. It's only light on dark with a spray sealant, I find, affects uh, whatever I'm doing on the, uh, on the holographics. Um, I have... I'm trying to think if I've spray sealed the holographic printable vinyl. Uh, I don't know if I have, just because I don't need to on that one. Everything is like really firmly affixed. I take my finger over the top of it and go like that and none, none of it rubs off. Like, so here's the holographic printable vinyl and this, you know, that's on there. Okay, that black is from this piece right here, but you know, this right here, you know, that's on there. I don't need to worry about any of that. And that's not sprayed. So I'm not going to spray this one. It's just, I don't need to. Now, I mean, if I want to get some of these black inks looking darker, the spray sealant would be a good way to go on that. But just doing it very lightly again, because if I spray seal this white, over black rock, that little kind of, you know, super thin, almost chalky, white pastelish. it's not white pastel, but it's the brilliance ink, but it, it's kind of that same type of effect. That might get too dark. I might, it might make it, you know, that transparent and I might not be able to see that um, cloudy texture anymore. And same thing with right, right up here where I've applied a lot of that white pigment ink up there. Um, that would disappear, but I'm not, I don't need to spray seal for, um, any type of protection or, you know, ed affixing of media to the printable holographics, at least with the, with the inks that I'm working with, um, that I've tried on here, there might be something that doesn't stick to it, you know, that I'll run into at some point in time, but, um, I just don't find... I just don't find that it needs it at all. So if I don't need, if I don't have to do something on something, I try to leave something as just a, you know, as bare as possible. You know, if I didn't have to spray seal this one, I, w I definitely wouldn't. So um, the only thing that I'm doing on the smaller sizes, instead of printing this out in the Brilliant Sync, um, I'm going with any type of the imagery that I'm doing on smaller formats on non-porous surfaces like cardstocks and, uh, you know, uh, um, not cardstocks, but um, uh, non-porous foils, holographics, etc. cetera. Um, I'm using stays on for that now, just so that the imagery is a little bit more stable 
and uh, you know, but I don't want to use stays on on foam stamps. Okay, I think it would harden on it potentially, and fill up um, the gaps and the pores like that. So anyway, all right. So I really like this card. I really like this. Um, um, I really like this card stock here. Um, when I first started using it, um, I wasn't sure about it in terms of the usability of it, okay? Um, but then when I used that Dr. Martin's in there and it stabilized my sky like that. And then when I went back in and I added, like this one right here, I didn't like what it looked like right when I stamped my imagery out because I had all these pillars showing right through all of these open areas of the rocks like that. I, I like it with silhouettes or something like that, but you can go back in there and you can add in that extra whatever tinting, sh shading, etc., into the pieces and... Um, I don't know. It takes care of all that. I wouldn't use two open areas of things like a cabin or something like that, I think. You know, I would have to darken up the whole thing or something like that. Something that's wide open, um, you know, so more kind of solid styles of imagery, I think, in here. Otherwise, that, you know, those those light columns are just going to show right through there. So I got to get out of the frame here. That looks much better without my head like that in there. That looks like there's an evil entity right here. It can almost make out the face. <laughs> All right, so anyways, thanks for joining in. Drop me a note if you have any questions. Um, are you able to get this type of... Did, were, did you get this some of this paper in Canada, Linda? If anyone... Uh, on a future viewing of this, replay or something like that, if you're in another country or whatnot, and if you like this vinyl, this particular vinyl, if you're able to find it, uh, maybe you can put a link down in the um, comment section as to where you got it. Like, hey, if anyone's interested in getting this in Canada, here's a link to whatever, Amazon Canada. Or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Or, you know, here's here's a similar thing here in, uh, you know, Australia or whatever. Uh, put that down there. Because I haven't looked. Some people um, ask me about those types of things. So if anyone knows where to find this type of stuff, wherever they are, yeah, please, please list it. Um, and it, it could be just be something similar. So um, the holographics, the holographic vinyls seem to be readily available though out there. The thing about this one though, they, uh, I should say is the, the printable holographic vinyls. Um, you can't do, oops. <laughs> that, okay, that looks good. It's dry or it's a little bit dry here. I didn't put a big fingerprint through that. Um, but uh, you can't put these like applications of black ink on here like I did on the printable vinyls, but on the holographic vinyls, you should have no problem getting those blends in there um, like this. All right, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed it and happy stamping. If you give any of these, you know, cards a, a try, if there's anything that you ever run into, um, as far as a technique goes that doesn't seem to be working or whatever, if you, you know, you have some challenges or something like that, take a photograph of it and email it to me and I'll be able to give you tips on how to work around that type of thing. I have a reasonably good, um, uh, whatever history with the, the different foils now. And there are some different, um, characteristics, um, from, the different foil to foil, you know, foils, recollections, foil, cheaper foils over at um, Michael's, um, the more non-porous ones like this one, 
and definitely things like the uh, the printable vinyls and I don't know if I've had a just holographic vinyl that I've purchased yet um, but plan to uh, check them out and to test them out but uh, yeah just let me know if you have any problems stamping on paper bags awesome I don't think I've done that before froggy fresh maybe maybe not for a while 20 years <laughs> look forward to seeing it can't wait maybe we'll see it on uh on facebook now too all right thanks everyone good night